Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Good Morning Science, the home edition. My name is Dr. Alon Eisenstein and I'll be the host for today. And I would like to welcome all the returning viewers to episode number nine. If you are watching this for the very first time, we hope that you'll enjoy it so much that you're gonna look us up and watch all the previous episodes. You can find us on our Facebook page or YouTube channel and most recently our TikTok channel. Um, before we get started, let me tell you a bit of a Pueblo Science if this is your very first time with us. Pueblo Science is a charity based in Toronto, Canada, and we focus on science education in rural communities all around the world, in the developing countries as well as developed countries, and we offer professional development training for teachers to show them how they can teach science in a more engaging, hands-on way by finding stuff, material, whatever they can find in their local environment and community uh, and make it more fun for them and their students as well. And so in these episodes we're going to show you a few of the uh, fun activities that you can try at home with materials that you can probably find lying around the house or uh, handy in the nearby store um, and hope that you enjoy it. And if you uh, think that you like what we do, we invite you to subscribe, subscribe to our channel and follow our Facebook page so you can be notified of every new episode as they come up. And if you believe in our cause and want to support us, uh, you can always click on the donate button uh, that appears on our channel as well. Um, okay, let's get ready for today's experiment. Let's see what we've got for you today. Okay, so let's see what we have for today. So we're going to have three experiments, as we usually do. And for today's experiments, here are the materials that you will need in order to do these experiments. Okay, are you ready? Okay, we've got, um, we've got a plate, a regular plate. We've got some water and uh, food coloring, which is optional, but it will make it more easier for you to see the effect on video. We're going to have some balloons. We're going to use skewers or barbecue sticks. We're going to use dish soap, candles, and either tea candles or birthday candles. Uh, you can use either or. You don't have to use both. Um, but I'll, if you are using birthday candles, then make sure you have at least four of them and a rubber band or elastic. Um, if you prefer, if you have tea candles handy or if you have one of those big chubby candles, that, that's also possible to use that instead. And we're going to use a, uh, a jar or a bottle. Um, it can be either a tall glass or in this case I'm using a plastic bottle, but I want to make sure that the, the neck is relatively uh, narrow and it's tall enough. Uh, we're going to use flame and we don't want it to ruin the bottle altogether. Um, and also we have Bipasha which will uh, use uh, raisins, soda water or Sprite um, and some lentil. So uh, hang in tight, I'm just gonna clear up some space so I can uh, work and we'll be right back with experiment number one. We have experiment number one and for this experiment, we're going to need some water. We're going to need candles. So I'm using birthday candles. I have four of them and elastics to hold them together. Um, if you have tea candles that would fit the opening of your bottle or your jar or your tall, tall glass, you can use that instead. Um, or if you have one of these chubby candles that, that is uh, sturdy enough to stand on its own, that's also possible to use instead. Uh, and I have some matches. If you have a lighter, that's also um, also good as well instead of a match. And some food coloring. Again, this is optional, but it will make the effect more vivid uh, when watching on video. So let me start by putting a few drops of red, uh, uh, sorry, green uh, food coloring into my water and giving it a nice stir, um, just so you can see the water clearer. Okay, now step number two, I'm going to pour very, very gently, I'm going to fill the, the, uh, the plate with my water and I'm going to try and get as much as I possibly can in there without 
spelling. Now, if you can do this where it's okay to get the floor wet, that's better. Uh, or alternatively, you can do it outside if possible as well. Um, and obviously, make sure that you have an adult uh, with you when you do this experiment because we're going to use some fire. Okay. Next up, like I said, instead of tea candles, I'm just going to use um, my birthday candles just so uh, to show you that even if you have tiny little birthday candles like I do, um, you can still use them um, slightly uh, one more step actually than a chubby candle because a chubby candle will stand on its own. With birthday candles, you want to grab maybe three or four of them and, and put the elastic to hold them together and then when you put them in the center of your plate oops, if they're all aligned well they should stand perfectly like that okay okay let me just zoom in there so you can get a better view of what's gonna happen now good okay now I'm gonna take my can my my uh, matches or my lighter and I'm gonna light up these candles let's get some fire going again you don't have to use four you can use less um, the more candles the bigger the flame and the faster and the bigger the the effect will be which obviously since I'm doing this on video I want to make sure the effect is very well visible um, but if you're doing it at home you could use a smaller flame it will take slower but definitely more safe uh, for everybody. Okay, now here is the magic time. So I'm gonna take this bottle and I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna very, uh, very gently gonna put it over the flame, over the candles, all the way to the bottom of the plate and I'm gonna do it relatively fast so I don't burn the uh, I, I don't burn the uh, plastic bottle, but not too slow um, to melt it, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put it all the way there. Ready? One, two, and uh, three. It's bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. And the flame is now... Whoop! What happened there? So pretty much instantly I got the flame to die and that was because all the oxygen got depleted remember fire needs oxygen uh, fuel and a source of heat and look what's happening now wow look at that all the water got sucked out of the plate Check this out. Isn't that fun? All the, all the water got sucked out of the plate into the bottle. Now why did that happen? Well, what happened was that as the flame burned, it heated up all the air and when hair is heated up, it has lower density. It expands and because it's expanding, it creates lower pressure. And as soon as I close the bottle over the candles, the air kept expanding, it kept bubbling from the bottom, and so the air pressure out here, which is colder, is less, uh, is higher pressure, it's greater density, higher pressure, and it's pushing the water. But inside the bottle, we have air which is hotter and lower pressure, lower density. And so the higher pressure from the outside can push the water all the way up. And it goes all the way to the top until the pressure in here and the pressure out here are equalized, including the force of gravity, right? So every time it goes higher, there's the gravity pulling it plus the pressure pushing in and the pressure uh, building up here as the water goes up into the bottle it compresses the air in here increasing its pressure so when the pressure here plus the gravity is equal the pressure outside it will stop rising so we still have 
air pressure here which is lower than air pressure out here but the added gravity force trying to push the water down makes it equal and so that's why it's not moving anymore. Now if I lift the bottle now that the air here is cooled down if I if I release it you'll see the air sipping out again. Oop, there we go. See? Very gently. Okay, I'm going to do it very gently because I don't want to splash all over the place. So the candles stop burning as soon as the oxygen is depleted, but the greater effect of suction is created by the hot air that was expanding, creating low pressure inside the bottle. Isn't that cool? Now please remember, make sure you do this with an adult and make sure to take videos and send it back to us so we can see your experiment. If you can use a jar that's glass or a tall glass, you can use a tea candle instead of birthday candles and you don't have to use four. This is actually a bit too much and it can burn the plastic. So it's better to use one candle. It will take longer but with some patience you'll definitely see the same effect that I saw here with the color. And you don't have to use food coloring, it's just for the fun and make it more vivid on video. Um, and if you do use food coloring, make sure to uh, keep the mop handy because it does actually make a mess and sting. Okay, so that was experiment number one. Hot air, that's how balloons actually rise. Hot air balloons and inside a bottle creating low pressure, making it go up into the air. Cool. Let me clean up this mess and then we can go to experiment number two. I hope you enjoyed experiment number one. Let's move on to experiment number two. For experiment number two, you need a glass, uh, like a drinking glass. You need some raisins and lentils and soda water or sparkly water or Sprite or anything fizzy, ideally clear so you can see through it. And for this experiment, I invited Bipasha uh, again to help me show how this works. So without further ado, let's move to Bipasha and see how this experiment runs. Bipasha, here's to you. Thanks, Alon. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you guys again. Um, I'm back with some fun experiments and again involving food. And today I'm going to show you how to make raisins dance. So last time I showed you how to make eggs float, but now raisins are going to dance for us. So what we need for this experiment is a transparent tumbler or large glass. We need raisins, of course. We need some sparkling water, seltzer, soda, or Sprite, or any clear carbonated drink. We need um, some lentils or, or any like light grain, which we can use as a substitute for raisins. And we need a spoon to scoop all the raisins or lentils out of the soda. So what we're going to do is we're going to first carefully open up this carbonated water. making sure that it doesn't fizz up everywhere. Oh! <laughs> yep, nearly there. Just making sure it doesn't spill all over the place. Once it's open, we're going to pour some into this tumbler. Try to fill it up. So once it's filled up, we're going to take some raisins, we're going to drop them in and we're going to see what happens. Do you see? It's kind of bubbly. Let me just drop all of them in. Do you see how they're going up and down? Just dancing and floating around. It's pretty cool. Looks like the raisins are having a lot of fun. And 
we've got another one. It's important to make sure that the carbonated water or whatever fizzy drink you're using is fresh so that all of the gas within the drink is, is retained, is still in there. I'm gonna close my drink so that I don't lose any of that gas. And now, maybe let's try with these lentils. So I'm gonna try to just... Actually, you know what? Maybe let's watch that again. I think it's pretty cool. Let's drop another one in. See if maybe I can shake them about. And maybe, let's see if they float around a bit more. Yeah! Also, this smells delicious. It's got some lemon in there. <laughs> Great. Okay. So now I'm gonna take out these raisins and just put them on the paper towel I have here. You could always just throw the, the soda water out and start again, but why waste? Tricky. And maybe we can try both of the raisins and the lentils in together. Okay, so now I've got all the raisins out. Another clear glass of refreshing carbonated water. I'm going to take some of these lentils and let's see if it works similarly. Now, keep in mind that some of them will immediately float to the top just because they're not as light. Sorry, they're not as heavy. And same concept of density that we discussed yesterday, I mean last time. Some of them will be less dense than the water and will immediately float to the top. But the ones that sink to the bottom, you can still see that some of them start rising. Cool, huh? Maybe let's add those raisins back and see what happens then. Ooh. See, maybe the raisins. Oh, not so much this time. I wonder why. Maybe we can hypothesize after we determine what the reason for this floating and dancing is. Okay, so I think the raisins are tired, but let's discuss it more scientifically now. So what happened here was when the raisins were dropped into the water, they immediately sunk. And that's because they're denser than water. So as we discussed last time, they would sink to the bottom of the class. But because of the presence of carbon dioxide in the soda, the carbon dioxide bubbles start to almost stick to the raisins or the lentils and act as a flotation device of sorts. This increases the buoyant force, which is a fancy word for an upwards force that is experienced by any object in a liquid. Um, the buoyant force or the upwards force increases and this is why the, the raisins start floating towards the top and when the carbon dioxide bubbles start popping, they go down and up and down, and that's what causes the raisins to dance and float around. Pretty cool, huh? I have a lot of fun with this experiment. Um, maybe you can try with other things. Maybe you could try with um, different day-old sodas. Maybe you could see what happens if the soda isn't as fresh or it isn't as carbonated. Or you could try with different objects. Maybe you could try with different size lentils. You could try with fresh grapes. Who knows? Um, so yeah, try it out. And maybe before we go, just because I had so much fun with it, I just want to show you guys again if it still works. Oh, look at that. They're still just floating and dancing around. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, we got some more lentils in there. And another thing, 
The reason why the lentils started floating a little bit more than the raisins could, could be because of the weight of the lentils. The lentils are inherently, or they're themselves, they're, they're lighter than the raisins, so they require less force to float upwards, uh, which is why you saw more of the lentils traveling up. Okay, maybe if I show it like this. Yeah, you can see more lentils than raisins are at the top. And as we left our carbonated water outside, the carbon dioxide started starting started leaving the liquid and um, dissipating into the atmosphere around us, into the air around us, which is why the effect of the carbon dioxide reduced with time and the raisins didn't dance as much. I think they just got tired. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you guys again next week and it's back to Alon with some more fun experiments. Bye! Thank you, Vipasha. That was really fun. And looks like you were really enjoying yourself with these raisins when they go up and down, up and down, up and down. You can probably spend all day just watching them uh, as they play around and, and float and sing and float and sing. And don't forget, if you do this experiment at home, we would love to see what you came up with. So do send us pictures and videos and share with us so we can enjoy how you did this experiment and were successful in doing it yourself at home. And now we have time for one last experiment, so hold on tight and let's get stuff ready for experiment number three. Okay, one last experiment for the day and for that we need this soap, we need skewers or barbecue sticks, and we need balloons, lots and lots of balloons. So, why don't we start? Um, let's inflate the balloons, and you want to make sure you don't inflate them too full, uh, just um, enough that they're solid, but not too pressed uh, and too inflated, okay? Okay, I think this is a good size for my balloon. Okay, and you want to close it nice and tight. And there we go. I've got one balloon. Now, I've got a skewer. And what do you think was going to happen if I touch my balloon with my skewer? You want to try? Mm, yeah, I don't like that popping sound too much. We're going to try and push the skewer through the balloon without popping. What do you think? Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take some dish soap and I'm going to put some over my fingers and I'm going to rub it all along my skewer so it's nice and, and oily, or not oily, but I guess lubricated. It's nice and soapy. Um, so I'm, I'm running it all the way from top to bottom so it's coated with a nice thin layer of soap. Now that I've got my soap, I'm going to poke the balloon. But here's the trick. If I try to poke it from the side, it will definitely pop. But if you look at the bottom, you'll see that it's very, very, uh, very uh, stretched on the sides of the balloon. And you can see how it's very evenly stretch and you, you can see it's clear where where it's stretched but on the bottom you can see that it's not very clear and that's because there's excess of rubber um, that hasn't been stretched yet so it actually has a lot of extra rubber here so it's thicker and therefore it is um, still opaque so close to the knot and if you look at the top you'll see that the top is also pretty opaque as well so at the top of the balloon, it's opaque because there's, again, extra, uh, extra rubber that hasn't been stretched too much yet. And same at the bottom. So I'm going to poke it at the very bottom and I'm going to try and squeeze it while rotating very gently and hope that it doesn't pop. Look at that. And now it's in. And if I try and find my... Um, you can put your finger so it's easier to to then find it and then you want to poke it again very gently and give it a nice twirl and you can poke through. 
Isn't that fun? Look at that. I poked a skewer, a barbecue stick, through the balloon and it came through on both sides. Isn't that neat? Now if you remember, we talked about last time, we talked about the plastic bags that are made of polymers and again, this balloon is made of a polymer. So if this is made of rubber, rubber is a naturally occurring polymer and like we talked about last time, polymer is this very long chain molecule and when you get them all mixed together it creates like this big spaghetti bowl of material and you can spread it and it's still very very elastic so even though the skewer pushes through it's still rubbery, it's still elastic, it attaches to itself and attaches to the skewer so it's holding the air in and it's not popping because we put the, the soap to make it run smoother. But we pushed away and made some room for the skewer to go through on both sides. Now if I let go, let's see if, what happens if I let go. Now I have two holes and it will actually deflate from both, both holes. It, it's deflating right now. Ready? Isn't that neat? Now luckily, I actually did it first time so I don't need to use more balloons for this experiment but if you happen to pop one make sure that you have more handy um, and just ask people around you if they're scared of popping sound some people are very sensitive to popping sound of balloons so just be courteous of people around you and ask them do you get scared if you hear a balloon pop and make sure that they're out of the room because it might pop first time around so if you can skewer a balloon Take a picture, take a video, send it back to us so we can enjoy your art's work and your craftiness and see what it looks like, okay? That was really fun. Okay, cool. Well, that's all the experiments we had for today. Um, so just a reminder, we started off with um, some water and fire and made the water go up, rise into a bottle by heating up the air inside with burning candles, creating low pressure in the bottle, and that allowed the air pressure from outside to push the water in. Um, and we also had Bipasha show us how to make raisins float in water with tiny little bubbles of carbon dioxide of gas that uh, leaves the carbonated water and creates little bubbles and makes it float like a buoy. Like a buoy. Um, and then it sinks as soon as it hits the surface and we skewered a balloon with a barbecue stick and some this soap. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you loved what we do, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and Facebook so you can see next episodes when they are launched. And if you believe in our cause to support science education in rural areas around the world, we would be very grateful to receive your donation on our Facebook page or our, on our homepage um, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now.